So I, I think we got everybody here. <laughs> so we can uh, reconvene uh, this meeting and the next item of business uh, on is to accept the remainder of the agenda for the evening. Is there a motion to do so or alternatively a suggested modification? Move that we accept the agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we accept the agenda as presented. Is there <laughs> any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that carries unanimously. Um, next item of business is public comment. Is there anybody from the public here uh, wishing to address the board this evening? Seeing no indication of that, the uh, next item is uh, new staff introductions. I believe there are some this evening. So. A trio. I know. Yes, we are. Uh, we have a number of them today. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and do some introductions and then we'll let them say a few words about their experience so far. But these are all summer interns working here at the Park District. Um, immediately to my right here is Eric Orta and he is in uh, planning and operations with his experience. In the center there is Carmelo, how do you say your name? Givada. Okay, I'll let him tell you how to pronounce that. <laughs> and he is working for Tim in landscape architecture and doing some experience there. And on the far end is Min Jae Son, who's doing a, an experience in uh, athletics and wellness. So I'll let you go ahead. All right, um, I'm Eric. I'm studying at Allegheny College in Meadville, Pennsylvania. Um, <clears throat> I'm interested in urban planning, planning in general, like development things, but it's not necessarily offered at my school. I'm studying political science and global health. And so I thought that this would be a great opportunity to kind of hash out my interests and see if it's actually something I'm interested in. And so far, I'm liking it. How, how did you find us? It's a long way from Allegheny. Um, I'm actually a local here. Uh -huh. I live in Urbana. I'm from Urbana. I just had to find my way out for college, so yeah, that's a yeah. Good idea. It's <laughs> came a good up through idea. some of the programs with the park district and uh -huh. Eric grew, grew, yeah. grew up across from Carl Park and his yeah. folks were involved in the Carl Park yeah. uh, master planning and oh, the, wow. the, the playground initiative. Mm. He's working on doing some strategic plan uh, research for us uh, and also working with uh, looking at solar installations in the district. Awesome, you're the one that's doing that. Great. Hello, everyone. My name is Carmelo Guevara. I'm from the west side of, of Chicago. I am I am a junior here in Urbana, Illinois, Champaign, studying landscape architecture. I guess my interest grew um, within the design aspect of this, and um, it just evolved from there. Learning new things, how it works. I feel like landscape architecture is just an opportunity to really um, put your mark in something, and it's something I would like to do. And I hope to build some connections here and really develop some skills that will really um, benefit um, along the way. Carmelo was one of my students last fall in environmental site analysis, so uh -huh. obviously we got a chance to talk and did superlative work and was really interested in getting some experience, and he was gonna be here for the summer, so oh, that's great. often hard because sometimes people have to go home and you know, live yeah. at home or work, right, so right, he was right. able to stay here, and so it's a good fit. We're working on a couple of downtown things, downtown connectivity, Got some opportunities to get Leal Park connected, maybe a side trail concept from downtown to Carl. Certainly Crystal Lake is our destination, the goal, and I think we're gonna be the ones to show that that can be done. Obviously the University Avenue uh, road project will kind of be right in between there, so mm -hmm. it's really kind of convergence of really four different projects or needs coming together, and so we can focus them on that, and uh, I think it'll be good for all of us. Yeah, it could certainly be it. And I think landscape architecture has a lot to offer to park districts. And I think Tim's leadership and being uh, in landscape architecture has really helped form this park district and made us look much prettier in a lot of ways than we would without a landscape architect. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Min Jae, and I'm from Korea, South Korea. And I just graduated from University of Illinois. Uh, I majored in uh, sports management. And um, I got to know about Urbana Park District because um, uh, during the school years, I was the president of uh, one of the, 
student organization. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Korean um, soccer association. So ah. we hosted tournaments and leagues, and then uh, Brooklyn's Gym was the place that we usually had our leagues and uh, tournament. So I got to know about it, and I already know, knew um, Kaya. So I got to contact with um, Steph's there. And um, currently I'm doing, I've been planning for pop-ups sports, which is um, oh, good. Uh, yeah. providing opportunities to uh, underserved um, people in Urbana with sports. So we did it, we started it yesterday, and many people appeared, so. How many is many? Uh, it was 16, but um, it was pickleball, and we, yeah, so. So they were all passion, passionate about it, but tomorrow we will <laughs> have a second session and hope many people appear. And if not, then we can improve and marketize better. So I'm looking forward to learning a lot of things that I couldn't learn in school mm. by this intern. Yeah, real life will teach you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, the pop-up plays are something new that Andy and his staff started working on once we got the underserved study and quick things that we could start now as we analyze the rest of the report. So he's got um, NJ and uh, Paul, right? yeah. uh, another intern that is putting the program together. It'll be a pilot. We'll be trying to see what things work, what doesn't work. Um, like the pickleball, for example, definitely <coughs> let itself to Blair, but there's other activities. There'll be some things in Crestview. There's some things over at King. Um, so they'll be moving around as well, but it's more of a pilot to see, you know, if there is interest and we'll be, you guys work with the marketing department, mm -hmm. to get a flyer made and we're working on getting that to uh, residents in the different areas. So it's a new program. Great. So you have a really interesting challenge since we haven't, it's not falling into, it's not learning how we do things, you're kind of setting the path for us. That's good. Welcome aboard. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Have a great summer. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Yes, yes thank you. Great to meet you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Likewise. Thank you, guys. Um, moving on to the UPDAC report, uh, we have a written report in our packet this evening. I don't know if there's anything uh, anybody wants to add to that. It was an interesting meeting. They, the UPDAC wasn't as, um, they didn't ask as many questions as I thought they, they, they would. Um, it wasn't that they were dismissing it, but I was, I was surprised that they didn't ask more questions, but it was a good presentation. Just for, your, for there were a couple that contacted me afterwards. Oh yeah, very interested. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, getting into a whole lot of discussion. One, um, um, I'm trying to forget who, which I talked to a couple of them, but mm -hmm. one of them actually sent me an email asking if they'd be involved in the prep for new programming ideas and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And we, I absolutely yeah. said yes, yes yeah. as we get through it and start working through some the the big highlights of what we need to do mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. we can do, then we'll definitely be working with yeah. uh, UPTEC. Yeah, it was a good presentation as usual. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Okay, let's move on then to our consent agenda. And on the consent agenda this evening, our approval of minutes from the May 2nd board study session, the May 9th regular board meeting, action to accept the philanthropy report and gifts listed with gratitude, uh, the receipt of the normal monthly reports from administration, planning and operations and recreation, approval of the monthly paid accounts payable, and lastly, action on Ordinance 2017-05, uh, the prevailing wage ordinance, which we are required to pass as it is presented uh, by state law. <laughs> so um, under our rules, uh, any of these items may be removed from the consent agenda on the uh, request of any single commissioners. 
is there any item uh, anyone would like removed from the consent agenda for separate action and discussion? Seeing no indication of that, is there a motion that we approve these items on the consent agenda in an omnibus fashion? I move to approve all the action items on the consent agenda and accept all the information items listed on the consent agenda in an omnibus manner. Second. Second. Well, that was kind of a tie. <laughs> we need buzzers. <laughs> we need buzzers, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, <coughs> been moved and seconded, and uh, also under the rules of the consent agenda, there's to be no further discussion. We'll move uh, directly to a roll call vote, uh, beginning uh, to the left with LaShonda. Oh, I'm sorry, I caught, caught you with a mouthful. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Let's start at the right with Bob. <laughs> Too fast. Aye. 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 <laughs> and that carries uh, with a unanimous vote by the five commissioners present. <laughs> okay, let's uh, moving right along to the financial reports, which are a little different this month. Mm -hmm. All right, tonight I'll be discussing with you the performance of our park district for May. And of course, this is very early in our fiscal year to be making any real analysis. We're only one month in. Uh, the fund balance report was not presented this month and won't be presented next month and that's because uh, during the months of June and July we're still booking payables uh, back into the previous fiscal year so it wouldn't be a very accurate representation of that report to present it um, until the until really we've had our audit and determined that there's no more payables to book and then that report will come back in August once the budget's approved by the board because um, the budget column in that report also could possibly be inaccurate so it's just best to wait on that one until we have a little bit more history to go on so the first report that I'll be discussing tonight is the budget analysis with history report this report shows a historical comparison of the one month period um, of the current year and the prior three years so uh, one month is eight percent which is a number you can use to compare to throughout the report the first section of this report is all funds district-wide and if you go to the middle of page two You can see for this one month period, our total revenues and transfers in were $2,013,000. Um, our first property taxes were received in May, and that was about 25% of our total extension was received with the first payment in May. And we'll expect about that same amount again with the June payment that we'll receive probably this week. So um, by the end of June, we'll probably be 50% in for our property tax receipts already, which is a good start to the year. You can also see on page three uh, that our expenditures for this period were 493,000 and we have a surplus at the end of May of $1,519,000. And following that are the uh, reports for the general fund, recreation fund, museum fund, and indoor pool that are summarized in the district wide version. The next report I'll discuss is the treasurer's report. The treasurer's report is the report of the amount of cash that the district has on one day, May 31st, 2017. Currently all 25 funds are listed, but I realized um, that actually the James fund is zeroed out. And so I'm gonna remove that going into, I'm not even gonna, it's not even in the budget for next year. So um, for FY18. So next month there will only be 24 funds to uh, discuss. And um, I, that was kind of, I just noticed it when I was reviewing this report to discuss it. And I said, oh, I should have taken that one off. So that'll go away. Uh, but anyway, this uh, report lists where all of the cash is invested in the district for a grand total of $9,965,064.96. Page two lists the amount, the top section lists the amount we have in interest bearing accounts. So of the $9,965,000 on hand, 8,617 is out in investments. Uh, if you recall last month, we had about a million dollars of CDs invested with Busey Investment Services. And I worked with them just this week on Monday, um, yesterday to invest 1.2 million. So I was able to increase our investments with Busey um, for mostly amounts that we have in fund balances that we're not intending to spend in the coming fiscal year. So those are all going into CDs. They invested at much higher rates than last year. So I'm really pleased. And um, 
those amounts, so the total amount of investments won't particularly change because the dollars are going from Chase Savings, which is already an interest-bearing account, but they're going into investments with Busey Investment Services. So that'll be a change you'll see um, next month's report you can look forward to, but it was kind of an exciting moment of my week to get to meet with <laughs> Busey and pick CDs, and it was kind of fun. Um, getting to know our banker there and you know it was it's really only our second year doing that we just started doing that last year with the dollars that we had on hand and fund balances that we wanted to increase our investments with Busey so kind of increase our relationship there um, the next section of this report lists disbursements so the disbursements listed here of the six six hundred and seventy two thousand dollars though that represents all <clears> the <throat> cash that went out in may but it was attributed not just to may's expenses but also to uh, fy 17 expenses that were still outstanding so may's expenses were actually just that four hundred and ninety three thousand that was in the previous report we just looked at so the rest of the difference was all attributed to last fiscal year but those are summarized here all together so if you were to take the totals from the four uh, accounts payable reports that you received in this month's packet that equals the six hundred seventeen thousand dollars or six hundred seventy two mm -hmm. yeah. sorry I said that wrong and finally the last section um, uh, lists interfund loans and I did want to point out that there was a change to this schedule as well in that um, the indoor pool is really short on cash at the end of the fiscal year until the school district pays their portion so I increased a loan from the recreation fund to the indoor pool which is something that has historically been done at this point in the year when needed it's not always needed but it was this year so as soon as the uh, last fiscal year's payments are finalized then um, that will go away so probably at, by the end of June that should be gone already it may just be the only month you see that but I just wanted to identify that as a change and if you don't have any questions I'd like to present the treasurer's report to you for approval I move we accept the treasurer's report for audit second that's been moved and seconded is there any discussion all in favor aye, aye. opposed that carries unanimously and uh, the next report I'll discuss briefly is the supplemental report of cash. So this report has the same information as the first page of the treasurer's report. However, it groups the information by expected use rather than by fund. And the uses are daily operating funds, restricted special needs, and restricted gifts and donations. So you can see of that same total of $9,965,000, uh, $1,420,000 is restricted obligations leaving 8,545 available for spending. And the final report I'd like to discuss um, are the changes and highlights from the capital budgets. So the areas with asterisks are where there's been spending or activity this period. And you, you'll notice there are asterisks actually in two columns uh, for this particular report because uh, of the activity from the prior fiscal year as we continue to pay payables. So there's April activity and May activity. And um, so in the 2017 capital budget, revenues were received from proceeds from the auction commission of the skid steer and expenditures occurred on mechanical replacements at PRC and on the Avant lift. And FY17 expenditures were booked for memorials, recreation small equipment, the 901 demolition progress, and uh, trees at Crystal Lake Park. In the 2016 capital budget this month, expenditures occurred on memorials, construction crew projects, operations small equipment, and the FY17 expenditures were booked for ADA projects, memorials, uh, Crystal Lake improvements, and retainage was paid out on the Hickman Wildflower Walk project. And finally, in the 2015 capital budget, FY17 payables were expensed for memorials, sediment basin project, nature play, the rain garden project, the Larson tennis court, and stream bed repairs. Caitlin was really busy. <laughs> And now I think Caitlin and Derek will have some updates for you on capital projects. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we had a lot going on um, between April and May that we were working on getting uh, sorted for, for the end of the fiscal year, but, but I think we did a pretty good job of it. Um, in the last month, uh, we have made a lot of progress on a number of capital projects. Uh, and that, that includes uh, the Larson Tennis Court. We, we've had a number of, of inquiries. I, I won't say complaints exactly. A number of inquiries. <laughs> 
confirming that we were not removing the tennis court. And so I very, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I, I very carefully reassured everyone, no, 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 we're making it better, we promise. <laughs> Um, and actually, so we've been working with um, Cross Construction on that, and they, they did a fantastic job finding drainage issues on the tennis courts and fixing them, hopefully, hopefully fixing them. Um, because the real issues that were happening on that court were, were cracking and, and water seepage um, over the winter and when it rained, and, and we knew that drainage was very challenged. Um, but there's, there's times at which you can't necessarily tell what's going on exactly until you just break open the ground and, and see what the conditions are. And so, um, so they did a lot of work to try to reestablish positive drainage. Um, the court surfacing, uh, well, the, so they, they laid down an, as, an initial asphalt layer, which is gorgeous. Uh, if it, when it rains, which it did rain a lot at the beginning of May, um, when it rains, uh, it's dry in 30 minutes. All of the water is off of it, and there's no pooling on it. So we're very pleased with that. Um, it, it took a month to cure, though. You needed to let the asphalt cure for a month before you could put the tennis surfacing on it. So that is actually scheduled to start on Thursday and continue through next week, after which there will be brand new fencing put up around the tennis court. So we're very excited about that. Hopefully in the next two weeks, we'll have people back playing on that court. So fingers crossed. And, and like I said, very, very happy with the work that, that's taken place there so far. Um, Similarly, incredibly pleased with um, Miller Enterprises on the 901 demolition, um, that they uh, ended up uh, reusing or recycling the vast majority of that building. There's actually somebody in Ohio who bought most of the structure from them. So, uh, so it was shipped off to Ohio, and like I said, just that, that nice, nice reuse that somebody is, is getting some purpose out of it. Um, but we are thrilled taking a look at, at that open space. Um, now that the now that the building is gone, it, it looks uh, it, it begs for picnic tables and a couple of trees planted in it. So so we're looking forward to that. Uh, we probably just slightly missed the window on the grass seating, unfortunately, getting pushed mm -hmm. back by a couple of rain delays. And so it's likely that we'll have to come back and seed grass seed again in the fall. Um, but for now, we're going to leave the uh, some fencing up to try to help grass establish if it can. Probably not in this heat. But if we do get a little relief from that and some rain in the next couple of weeks, there's the possibility. So, so we'll keep an eye on it. Um, the bioswales up at the Anita Purvis Nature Center, um, I think as we reported before, all of our native plant nurseries have kind of struggled with the unusual spring weather with the enormous amount of rain and then bone dry conditions we've had in the last couple of weeks. They've had uh, very mismatched growth seasons depending on the species and so we were waiting on a couple of plants some butterfly milkweed some pale purple cone flower a couple other things um, which were delivered and installed on monday so we're very pleased with that they are also seeing some inconsistencies with the sedge planting in the middle of that though um, and so we are working closely <coughs> with them to see what we can do over the next year of maintenance to uh, to probably reseed a lot of that sedge mix so you know, we and NCAP, the contractors, are very dedicated to this being a successful project. So we're gonna we're gonna keep at it and and make sure, especially since it's it's IDNR money and and remediation funds, that we're we're gonna make sure that it, it's used well and and has a good product at the end of the day. I think the extremes of weather there too are, are impacting that seeding. <coughs> we had good germination initially, and a lot of it's just sort of dried up. And they're attempting to water it at this point, but it, it, it might, it, as Caitlin said, they're committed to reseed it if they need to. The plants that they installed, though, around the outlets and up at the caps, they look wonderful. And we are putting up some fencing to make sure that people don't drive over them, so, or at least some, some roping yes, around I, the edges. I saw a troop of small children going through like a, like a pack of dogs, just <laughs> not. We, we put signs I just wanted up today. to leap out of my car. And just <laughs> I forwarded your note. Yeah. I could use for the dandelions in my yard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, you know, there, those little sort of popsicle stick signs were up all over, and the kids are just walking through, knocking them over, and the mother's just. Yeah. I watched it as adults walked right through. Yeah, yeah I suppose it's yeah. not just kids. Yeah, that was just my, my own. It was, it was disheartening. Yeah. Is what is what it was because I thought, you know, how unobservant mm -hmm. people are that they can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know. Well, anyway, I could go. <coughs> well, the signs and fence should help. Hopefully. Good. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll bring a dog. <laughs> um, similarly, the nature playscape. Um, <laughs> we were supposed to get about 1,000 plant plugs to go into the playscape, and those are delayed as well. And we're actually thinking that at this point, we'll plant them in the fall 
Um, so Pisa was going to be holding on to them. And actually, you know, there, there's some ways in which that's convenient. This is a really tough time on our landscaping crew to make sure that all of our annual beds go in in time, and especially right now, are watered. Mm. Um, but, uh, but also, you know, it, this gives us six months to see how kids are playing on it and where kind of the usage patterns are and where could use some plants and some beautification. So uh, we'll do that in the fall and September and October probably. Is there um, any grass left on the, I, I, I think of it as the billy goat gruff bridge there. Not, not a lot in the middle. Right, right. <laughs> um, but there, there is actually some good establishment on the sides of it where there's good, good, fewer good. kids running. And um, while it was still a little cooler actually, um, there was good establishment of grass just in the kind of that center area where we've left everything mm -hmm, open mm -hmm. so that kids can play and manipulate things. And there was some good establishment of grass in, in those sections. So I haven't seen it in like the last week or so. So again, those dry conditions, I'm not sure how it's holding yeah, up, but it yeah. is very shaded. When, when I go by, I, and if there's anybody in there, I almost always see them dancing on top of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they love it. Yeah. They wanted a hill and that tunnel, that uh, is their just, hill. It is, yeah. So, I'll mention that was one of the contributions of UpDeck, actually. Jamie, when we did our tours, Absolutely. saw lots of tunnels. And we were we were not convinced that we wanted one. We felt like mm -hmm. the introduction of manufactured materials was something that we were concerned about. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. he reminded us that it was something that we saw a lot of and that was very popular. And, and Becky Mead. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, yeah. those examples were good. good. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's obviously very popular. I mean, I, I've seen a variety of things dragged into the tunnel and blocking up one end of the tunnel. I mean, it's just, it's so much fun to go and see what the latest mm -hmm. play has produced over there. We agree. It's really amazing to watch. Um, we'll hear a little bit more about this later in the meeting, um, but we've made some progress on our Illinois Transportation Enhancement Program grant. Um, we're actually going to have the engineering to present to you guys tonight, so we're really excited about that and um, progress forward and, and just uh, some of the information that we found as we talked to engineering firms about how challenging the ITEP grant can be. Um, and uh, a very, very illuminating process, like I said, that we'll, we'll, we'll tell you a little bit about uh, soon. And then out at Crystal Lake, uh, some good progress. What we really hope is that we'll be bringing engineering services proposals in front of you in July. I know you hear that every month that we're going to see it next month, but this time I've been very firm. I only have one month left, so it's got to be next <laughs> month. I'm I'm, uh, I've got to put this in, in a good place for everybody. So. Um, we're also doing a full day charrette on the lake house on Monday, which, which uh, Smith Group JJR is going to be leading. So we're going to be getting into a higher level of conceptual design um, and integration with the rest of the plans that we've made so far about where trails should go, uh, public use, water access, boating, um, really taking an intensive look at the lake house specifically to see how it's going to kind of what the new life of the lake house is going to be. So. Those are my updates, and we'll have a couple more things, like I said, later. Who will participate in the charrette? So it's mostly going to be internal staff, uh -huh. um, okay. because we did already do um, up 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 We did the, the swap right. with UpDAC, mm -hmm. and we did a swap with a larger staff group. Right. So this is going to be um, Tim, Derek, Corky, myself, Kara, Janet, um, oh, yes. and Shane and Keith from a materials and maintenance mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Chris Billing from Burns Clancy and Associates is going to be joining us as well. So should be should be a good day. I think we're going to have Excited. some really uh, excellent awesome. ideas come out of that meeting. Um, and Smith Group has been very uh, has been exceptional at transforming all of the ideas that we tend to spew out into something practical and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've been on. I mean, they've been working with us on the mm -hmm. park for a long mm -hmm. for a long time since the master mm -hmm. plan, at least. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think they know it well, which makes a big difference. About I eleven think. years. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mentioned it's with a heavy heart that we've begun doing project manager interviews this week. Um, this is Caitlin's is referenced. She's um, moving on, and I'll let her talk more about the details of her move. But the good news is we've had some very highly qualified applicants, both internal and external, and uh, it's going to be a def tough decision. To, uh, we're, we're still in the process of interviewing, so we're eager to see what the rest of the candidate pool looks like. But um, a good group of folks that are interested in working for yeah, us. Yeah, it'd be too long a commute, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be. Yeah, a four-hour yeah. commute might be a little bit. Um, but so, so my husband accepted a, a visiting assistant professorship at Coe College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and uh, my last day is August 4th. So July will be my last board meeting. Um, I should be at the August study session, fingers crossed. But um, as Derek said, we just have kind of an amazing pool of applicants to this position. Um, 
I, I've said that uh, I'm kind of intimidated by their quality and I have the job. So, <laughs> um, so uh, I really think that, that the district is going to be in excellent hands with, with whoever the, um, the committee selects and I should have about three weeks of overlap with them okay. to at least get them on their feet. So. <clears throat> Remind me of what your experience was when you started this job. Because yeah, it, it, what, <laughs> I, I mean, you were at the Nature Center, right? I was. Yeah. Um, so I have I a I have a master's degree in museum studies, um, which I always say is kind of like a, a nonprofit degree that talks about buildings too. Because uh, Derek, mm -hmm. in my three month interview, I always joke um, asked, you know, did you ever think you were going to deal with HVAC systems? And I was like, yeah. What do you think collections need? Like oh. museum collections are <laughs> oh, based sure. on right, how right. much how what your HVAC system is doing. So, um, so you know, I, I already had that background kind of in strategic planning and and budgeting and community engagement. And, and what I had to learn when I came to the job was construction materials. Yeah, which is um, no small. No, small no thing. It's a lot to learn. There were courses at Parkland in the construction design and management uh, track that I ended up taking, and and that was very very helpful to me. Interesting. So, um, so you know, I think that a lot of it comes down to loving the projects that you're working on, loving the park district, loving the community here, um, and and you know just knowing that you're serving. And, and working with this team of people who have such integrity and who care as much as you do about everything that's going on and, and making sure that things are done right and done well for the benefit of everyone. So yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. I was going to give this whole speech at the August study session, and like, <laughs> now I've just given it. So, um, but out. yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a bittersweet moment for me. If it was just my decision, I wouldn't be leaving. But, uh, you know, got to stick with my family. and. And uh, as I said earlier, I, I already accepted a position at the National Czech and Slovak Museum and Library today, actually. So I'm going to be uh, their administrative assistant doing um, help with development and uh, coordinating a national and sometimes international board and advisory group. Well, and if they need help on their parking lot, you'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just send any plans my way and I'll help. So, yeah. Oh, well, they're lucky to have you. I don't say that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you Thank for you. everything. Yes. It's been my pleasure, really. You have to say that in August, too. I know. I, I will. <laughs> okay. so, uh, so, yes, well, thank you guys, um, especially for all the trust you've put in me in the last three years. And, and I'm not gone yet. So. All right. All righty. <clears throat> okay. That was covering a lot. <laughs> and and then <laughs> move on to the executive director's report. Sure. Well, we're in full summer swing. I'm sure you've all been out in the parks and seen all the activity and we're really excited. Everyone's having a good time. I think things are going well mm -hmm. uh, for today. So um, on with a couple of updates. Uh, CC First, that's Champaign County First. That's our kind of local broad-based agency participating group that's really working on high critical key projects in our, our countywide area. Uh, it's led primarily by the chamber staff. Just came back from the Washington DC trip. Obviously the report was, it's gotten better every year. I think it's about our fourth year of making a real concerted effort to get to Washington and Springfield to lobby for you know really critical projects. Obviously the report was a little disheartening because things are not totally solid in DC. Um, it's always, as you would imagine, who do you, how do you talk to the right people and can they actually help you or do they deflect you and you know kind of not get you on, on track i think some of the ideas um for next year were that we need to take a more diverse group i think the idea is that things are moving in different directions in the dc area um and so the idea is i'm trying to use the right words maybe there's a variety of project opportunities that if you bring the right people and the discussions get going there will be some synergy instead of going in with a sort of a bullet pointed list of we got to have or get done and then if you don't make that connection, you know, is there an alternative? So I think that's an interesting thing we're going to work on um, over this next year and get ready for, for next year. Springfield obviously has its challenges too. We're encouraging everybody to, to uh, participate at that level. Obviously with no state budget, it's kind of a frustrating time because while there can be excitement and ideas and things that might help us, getting it done and the follow through is certainly the, the missing link. So we need to keep trying, keep doing what we're doing. I think we're getting better. We're getting more organized. I do think um, we have some potentially some interesting projects through the park districts and forest preserve we should be promoting 
also, both for DC and, and uh, Springfield as it relates to transportation and, and uh, facilities. So we'll keep working on that. Uh, went to a wonderful meeting. Uh, Corky and I attended the Immigration Forum. Had sort of a kind of a meeting, partnership, and a training session, uh, encouraging all of us to get active with the Welcome Week, which is a national uh, week of celebrating uh, people from other places. It's September 17th through the 23rd. And as it happened, it wouldn't surprise any of you, there were a number of Urbana groups there, and we were able to connect actually at the meeting with the school district and urbana free library i think we're going to collaborate together and one of the one of the comments which you can imagine is true and it would be a concern somebody asked hey this is a great thing we do a really neat thing for a week but then after that week what happens and so we all got our wheels going and thought if we all could partner could we offer something throughout the year that would be of interest or and again i think we we're encouraged to think both big and small small can work also so you don't need huge dollars the example the school district has done is they've had um, the administrators have a soccer game with some of the uh, soccer participants, often a lot of Hispanic uh, adults. The parents will come out and, and play soccer. So again, it wouldn't be a high cost thing. It'd just be a lot of fun. But it, it's a way to break down that barrier and have a, have a real, real conversation. So we're gonna be getting together and talking about what we can get done in Urbana. And I think it's very, collaborative group there could be other spin-offs and opportunities so just kind of energizing to be with a group of people that are trying to reach out make connections make people feel welcome again for our tagline you belong here it's a perfect fit and we're excited about that had a great meeting with the east central illinois archery club meeting um, last late last week um, we're winding down or ending our last five-year lease agreement and so we're reviewing the terms the group um, just loves being out there so we're gonna probably make a few recommend recommendations on the lease agreement. Obviously we have a new attorney with Matt, so we'll want Matt to review it um, and get that in, into shape. Long-term we did discuss, you know, what's the future? Obviously as the Perkins Road site continues to get restored, we've got the Weber Park next to it. I think it's really a little further down the road, we don't know, but we did suggest to the group that, you know, there could come a time where we have to think about the whole site. <coughs> and is that the best arrangement? So I think they're open to that. Obviously they, they like that site, but there could be some other opportunities. So we wanna take this next five years to sort of you know investigate that. The good news, the club likes working with our staff. Our staff likes working with them. It's a good fit. They're very responsive to any concerns. I think we have a number of projects we're gonna look at too. I know Derek's suggested they could take our new equipment, maybe clear some of the honeysuckle, good way for us to practice, good way to clear some things out. Um, maybe working on the front appearance a, a little more, making sure maybe some of that stuff gets cut back. And so that when you go to the dog park, it looks more like a continuous site and that it's, you know, has a little more street uh, presence there. I think Corky talked about programming opportunities, increasing opportunities for archery for kids, you know, to get involved. Um, so I think they're responsive to that. Oh, they well. are. Um, they are dependent on available people that can be instructors, so they're limited. You know, it's a uh -huh, uh -huh. smaller club, or like any club, the key organizers. Usually right. there's a, a, a small network of people. Um, but that was all very, very positive. So we'll be working on that, probably bringing Elise back to you shortly. Uh, let's see, moving along. Um, I think Nancy mentioned already the May UPDAC with the underrepresented report. Again, we think it's really critical. It's probably going to be a, a new focus of, of the district, so we'll keep working on that. Um, we had a wonderful presentation that um, our staff organized, um, titled it Transforming Urbana, and we hosted in this room. We had a variety of people to come and listen to about the KRT and Weaver Park and what we're doing at Crystal Lake Park. We kind of want to do a little, I called it a think tank, but get a, people that we know, people that have, you know, served on boards, have worked here, worked other places, to kind of hear our story and offer suggestions. It was a very wonderful dialogue. I think staff did a fantastic job. Forest Preserve and the Park District staff did an excellent job presenting both projects. We had a Q&A time for each project after. I think it created a lot of excitement and synergy. Mayor Marlin was able to join us, so she got a good chance to get updated on both of those initiatives and um, working together. I think one of the crests I wanted to, to mention, I brought up at the foundation meeting, and I think it was recommended we talk to our board about it, but Dan Olson had asked me if it would be possible for, would we consider to have our Urbana Parks Foundation work with the Forest Preserve 
foundation so that we could accept gifts, work cooperatively, whether it's something that happens at Weber Park, somewhere along the KRT, um, as an opportunity to, you know, encourage probably I think I think of us and think of our opportunities or maybe a number of Urbana residents that would be interested in that project. It seems seemed odd to staff that, you know, some recognition might be in Muhammad or at a headquarters somewhere. Could the idea of Weaver Park be a gateway entry into Urbana or out of Urbana and also have amenities or recognitions? You know, we're not, not sure what they'll all be, but work collaboratively. If gifts come, is there a way to cooperatively work that? And so the foundation response, I think, was we would do whatever the park board asked us to do. So we don't need to decide that necessarily tonight. Um, but, and again, I'm not even sure how formal it needs to be, probably some formal action if we're actually working together and messaging, you know, to attract people. But certainly at the staff level, we're already cooperating and, you know, collaborating on the project. So it makes a lot of sense to us. So we'll probably come back with some more specifics uh, later on on that. Keep moving. We had a terrific event out at Meadowbrook. The Uncorked um, Urbana Wine Festival mm -hmm. was a partnership with the Urbana Business Association, Urbana Park District, and there was one other partner. I, I know on the flyer, I, it's just escaping me right now, but terrific turnout. I think Corky, Derek, and I went out after our, we had a full Saturday of, of site visits, but just see how things were going. And I think there was probably 1,300 people that had already been there. And that was, what, 7, 7.30, 7-ish? Seven. Yeah. And other people were telling us there's more coming because it's going until 10 o'clock. So wow. Paris is probably working on um, numbers. She was also in our group mm. on, on the Transforming Urbana. So trying to find ways to work more with the business association. Those kind of numbers compare again with Strawberry Jam and... Uh, they, Strawberry Jam's about 2,000. Yeah, yeah 2,000, so, right. I mean, it's right. getting up there. It yeah. is. They um, were able to use the U of I forestry parking area, um, the grass parking. So fortunately, the weather was good. You know, it's a, always a concern. Meadowbrook's a great park, awesome site to be at, but it does have a few limitations as far as, you know, parking, what we would call direct parking. Um, I think the longer term hope or next year's plan is to see if we can get it to Crystal Lake Park. Um, but we also recognize we'll have some projects and work going on at Crystal Lake Park, so um, we'll have to work through that. But clearly there's an interest. It's a good fit for us. It's the kind of event I think that works well in a park. Previously it was done at Busey Bank in their open parking lot on the asphalt side. And uh, it's just very difficult for me to yeah. imagine that, you know, because it's not a, you know, it's a parking lot. And uh, while well, it's an open space, probably not real shady and doesn't lend itself to sitting and right, lingering. Right. So we, we heard a lot of positive comments. There were a couple of food trucks. I mean, it was anything else you guys want to mention that no, I just caught your attention? Everybody yeah. I, I imagine the barn was a pretty nice Actually, the and barn that, was a nice setup. That worked the way they collected money and, you know, traded tickets and all that. Uh -huh. But I think we were talking, the three of us, we saw an audience that we don't penetrate, that we don't reach. Oh, yeah. that aren't, I mean, it's sort of kind of our age ranges in this room here that don't sign up, you know, they're not in the programs we we offer every every time so i'm excited about that just you know another connection the music was good and we had food demonstrations so it was really very very um it was fun it was great great setup so i guess we just wanted to see one monitor if, if we if construction requires we return to metal next year if that's right. you know just show the preference because it is a beautiful location it is the parking could become a challenge at some point when we arrived 70 to 80 percent of the grass lot was full um, and once that's full, they, they were not able to secure permission at the church, which is where we would ordinarily park for right. Strawberry oh, Jam. Right. So there would be some real limitations. But right. it, it worked beautifully this, this last weekend. It was mm -hmm. just a gorgeous event. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that because of the involved alcohol? Yes. Church yeah. yes. But if people parked there and just walked across, the church wasn't going to, I mean, they just didn't. We, we asked. We asked them to, you know, get permission. And I well, think sure, that's right. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the challenge there is we're listed as a sponsor for mm -hmm. the event, so they show up and they see a bunch of cars there. And then, what are they going to do for us in the future? Right, of course, right. And that guy, and the right, we just the awarded, guy from that church just yeah. Yeah, we just awarded award. a community right. service award last month wanna, or in right, May, right. I think, on that. That's yeah, so. one thing that people actually park in the church is out of habit. But if we tell them to park at the church, oh yeah, yes, exactly, yeah. right. Um, but if people had, there wouldn't have been. I mean, without any encouragement, that would have. You know, we don't want to encourage that since they didn't right. want them there. But yeah, mm -hmm. 
I think I'm telling my Saturday events backwards, but the three of us also went out to the BMX course out in Farmer City. As you know, the Champaign County Fairgrounds is considering working with mm. Illini BMX to locate a, a track there. And very different uh, park out there. I think it's South Park. Um, is that the right name? Absolutely. Yeah, it sounds like the TV show. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Farmer City is a s much smaller community. It was sort of an edge um, park that was up against a stream corridor. So it's buffered, I guess is the word. Um, but it really was a very positive experience. They have a you know real family atmosphere. It's a lot of kids and, and families. Um, you know, it's a little dusty and you know, they, they do have some music and, and announcers and things. We didn't stay for the actual meets. We went out or the races went uh, just prior to that, met with the groups that organized it and got a tour. And um, I think, you know, probably for the fairgrounds, it's a reasonable uh, thing to add there. And I think it could attract, again, a different group that we're not directly serving. There could be an opportunity to, you know, tie in or feed in on, on that. So we'll, we'll see how that continues. Do you have a sense of how the, the how noisy it would be? How, how you know, much of it, it wasn't terribly it noisy. It really wasn't terribly yeah. noisy there. Again, it's Edge Park kind of a thing. But I don't know. Corky was saying with the music at the Crystal Lake pool, I don't know if you would hear it if it's at the level that we heard it. You know, certainly if they bring in 20 speakers and there's... Right, you know, right. 10,000 people there, you know that. But I don't think that's the scale you right, know, that, right. that's realistic. There were probably... And how much dust was it kicking up? I mean, uh, we're, we're located they're just... Water yeah, they, 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 they were watering it down. Yeah, they water it during the meets. Or, sorry, race. I keep calling them meets like swimming. Um, so, you know, we want to continue to have some more discussions um, about those sort of things. Um, I'm not necessarily sure our goal would be out to stop it, um, but... If it's going to happen, can we be good neighbors and try to work together? Mm -hmm. And I think long term, I would you know, recommend we need to work cooperatively too with the fairgrounds. If we lean on them to borrow parking or maybe host an event or part of an event, you know, we hope they say yes you know, to us. So trying to, trying to work through it and be reasonable about it is what we're trying to do. Some of the concerns that still linger, you know, drainage. Obviously they're bermed and mounded. Water's gonna go somewhere. <clears throat> so where is it going to go, um, and, and what can they do about that? So we're trying to work through that. Next steps for them is probably get a zoning permit approved by Champaign County Planning and Zoning. So that'll be their uh, permit to move forward. So we'll, we'll uh, work with them and see how that goes. So we don't have a sense of the timeline there? I mean... Than they, they think if they got yeah. a permit tomorrow, they the, might get some races yeah. in by the end of the summer. Yeah. Ah. They've got a professional BMX building group that's kind of waiting for, for that, that uh -huh, process. Uh -huh. And so this was, I think, part of, the, part of what needed to happen for us to go and see it firsthand. Right. You know, the, 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 the footprint, the, the presence wasn't as extreme as I was worried about. You know, the largest berm that they're looking at, was, 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 it was relatively subtle. I mean, it, it, mm -hmm. um, and I think I was, I began to, to think differently when he talked about the importance of getting kids outside and off mm -hmm. their Xboxes and right. and you know all, these were a lot of young kids. Yeah. You know, even oh, kids out there on push bikes. We didn't see it that day, but they have it and mm -hmm. some older folks as well. So <laughs> mm -hmm. it was it, it, and and as Tim mentioned, it was definitely a family sort of environment. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was well run. Yeah, it wasn't and too dusty. I mean, it, considering how windy and dry it's been, it, yeah. was, it really wasn't, uh -huh. it wasn't too uh -huh. dusty. <clears throat> and it was really howling out there. Yeah. We sh I bet. Saturday. What sort of season do they have, so what, to speak? April to it's October. Mm -hmm. a April, uh -huh. October, early November, they said, depending on the weather. Uh-huh, okay. Diverse age group, I think they had little, looked like five-year-olds, and then I think they said somebody that competes is 60 in the group so so it's, it's a pretty wide range the guy, Seem like families that have kids and extended groups the guy who built the race course is he well, his father really he maintains it now his whole family has gone on to do different sorts of cycling events one does mm -hmm. uh, triathlons another does mountain biking and mm -hmm. uh, he himself has moved into road criteria yeah. so yeah. It's, it's sort of a, a, an avenue for folks to become lifelong right. cyclists uh -huh, right. uh -huh. which certainly speaks to our interest right you know, as far as biking so so you you're not as concerned is that when i'm reading that you're not as concerned about the development over there as we originally were still the, the drainage is probably yeah. one of our yeah. bigger concerns right. and you know when we talk about concerns about music they they, they hear us they say well, you know, we'll work with you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as long as that continues to be the case you know for example the site there there's really no drainage concerns it's open fields that lead to the creek so any if it's bad enough, in fact their site floods when it backs up when you know mm. the, the area floods in the spring so you know, getting them to do due diligence on drainage is, we think, necessary. And so 
I think they're willing to do that. I think they want the park productive. district support because sure. that'll make the permitting, you know, process, right. you know, that much easier. And it'll give them a better operation if they if they build it with we, good we drainage so. in the first place. Yeah. Obviously, um, so um, and again, it's a seasonal operation, so it's not like it'll be there, you know. Or, I mean, the site will be there, but the activities won't won't be year round. Um, so we'll keep reporting on that. Uh, we also then Corky and I went up to Crystal Lake Pool. We had the first outdoor movie up there after the regular pool hours. It was interesting to me because I kept thinking, okay, who's, how many people are going to come? You know, 20, 30? I just thought, you know, it's a movie that's been in the theaters and might be, a, it's a oh, little bit later. Line, Your little five year olds might be ready for bed. And there was what 350 oh, up there and it was if i just I remember couldn't I'd have been there believe it it was unbelievable everyone had a great great time it was very unique it was very exciting which uh, way is the projection i never I'm not uh, very good at thinking. well that night we're it may get moved but that mm. night it was um on the east side of the comp pool aha uh -huh. it's a little more room just you know spread right, out right. on that side right, yeah. right do you have your pool numbers while we're at, did I you do? i thought it'd be a good segue because well, I was good. Well, he's looking. Obviously, hot dunes are great for pool pass sales, but very difficult for landscape and construction because they they work at opposite. Yes. So I just got some real quick numbers, and um, our our pool pass sales are pretty much the same. I, I think it was 782 last year, and this was a week and a half ago, so it's probably increased. But um, 782 total passes so individuals so it could be family of five councils five um so this year we were at 781 so we're right there about the same ballpark um total number of patrons up to through um sunday uh in 16 2016 which remember was a, a good year for us again with the weather um, we had 10,143 visits to that point from the memorial day to june 12th this year we've had 12,315 visits. Um, interesting part is our members um, have, in 2016 they visited 2,129 times, and so far this year they visited 2,732 times. Hmm. So our members are seem to be utilizing us more this year, so that's good. Um, Revenues, and this is just revenues coming through the, the pool itself. Mm -hmm. um, $69,120 in 2016. And for 2017, as of Monday, it was $82,385. So, and, uh, and our prices have stayed the same. Yes. And that doesn't count Monday or today or the rest of the... 90 degree span we're going to have here so well when i go at 11 which is just i mean who's there navy eaters are there and um the toddler swim time i mm -hmm. think are the only ones who are there that parking lot is more than half full when i'm there at 11. Mm -hmm. which is really you know i think i'm just going to cruise in a, mm -mm. you're probably seeing some cars at the nature <laughs> play too maybe um no there was nobody there yes nobody that day mm -hmm. no no i mean there were a lot of kids there on on must have been Friday, but no, there was nobody up there. It was all, I assume it was all pool. Pool. Or 90% anyway, yep. So, so far, so good. It's going well. Last Wednesday, we took our third uh, athletic and wellness uh, facility tours in more central Illinois area. So we got to see a little different scale of projects, visited um, Leroy, Champaign Park District, um, a few of the more local did visit the YMCA obviously that's more of an upscale facility on the west side of Champaign very, very nice I it was really the first time I'd gone through the whole pretty much the whole building they, they do a wonderful job there um, so it's very nice so I think we got a kind of a little bit more local or closer to home feel on that and I think we'll report back on that at our August study st study session and be talking more about that lastly want to just touch on underrepresented um, working with Corky and Sam Smith, who works at Cranert. We met um, about two years ago when we were kind of all just bringing groups together. Um, they have an interest in working with the underserved also. He's developed a kind of a small 
very small group of volunteers, but they're going to hopefully help us like do things like get flyers out for some of these pop-up type events to you know really try to penetrate some of the neighborhoods there. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Did get a request um, today. I think the Learman Avenue area is you know requesting help. Again, Robin Arbeiter reached out. She doesn't live in the neighborhood any longer, but certainly is connected there. And so we're trying to work on that. Uh, LaShonda gave us a good lead on the Chicago Breeze. Um, they offer uh, girls basketball camps or workshops. So we're going to see if that might be something that could go forward. Champagne was contacted also. So thank you very much for that. We appreciate that. And then let me see my last note. Um, I think that was I think that was our last note. I just had one more thing on the yes. um, the movie theater the movie idea, which was something again that we just thought maybe we wanted to do it for the pool, but we also are, are thinking to do it um, for more of like pop up shows in different parks as we move forward with the underserved study. One thing we are planning this year is after the Prairie Park Neighborhood Night. Um, we we're going to show a, a movie there as well that night. So we're we're working on what the movie is, and then that'll be part of the flyer that that gets handed out as well. And this is equipment that we bought with um, donation from First Federal. A thousand dollars was donated from First Federal. Federal. Okay, it was them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it belongs to us. We're not having to rent the equipment to do this, right? No, and it is it's very, very nice. nice equipment. That is yeah. terrific. Beautiful. The speakers image, were like. Sound. Like Super this quality. big, and I was like, oh, boy. And then we turned them on, and uh, I think we could have blown everybody out of there. They, they really had really good Very sound. Very high quality. Um, it Picture was really quality. Yep. theater quality, and it was really good. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Very exciting. That's all I had, but can answer questions of that or other topics. I mean, it, there was a, a note here under your report about update recruitment. Is that? Yes. Is anything? Yes. Oh, We're oh, actually, okay. thank you. I met, Blended my scripts, things I wrote in the report. Uh, we're getting some last-minute interest in a, a few folks, so we're hopeful. Uh, we still need to be thinking of people, so if you, any of you have names that you could think of, please forward them to Ellen or I, and we'd be happy to at least get them on a list and make contact. Um, but we have a couple of people that have, I think we've just connected. We still need more, but it, we were getting a little, just a little nervous the other last week early, but um, please let us know. We Again, I think Ellen and I were talking about it. We think that sort of the full approach of advertising, talking, networking, anywhere we can go talk to a group. I was at the SUNA meeting and encourage people there, um, you know, to consider it. So uh, we'll take all leads if you have suggestions of groups. Whenever, you know, we go to groups, somebody usually makes a pitch <coughs> for UPDAC. So um, I think part of it, I think from our sort of view is it's been in place for I think for almost 45 years and so so many people have already served so those people are off you know off the list and so finding new people that know about us that would be willing to serve um, is is they're out there we just have to connect <coughs> but open any suggestions I think bringing the movie back was a, a great idea uh, a lot of people have been talking about how they missed it when it was offered at Crystal Lake Park at the Hill. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a great idea that you guys have brought that back. Um, I just have one question. I know there were a few people that were turned away at the event, and I know it was the first movie, and you know things are being ironed out, kinks, and how to make it run a little bit mo more smoother. But um, there were a couple of people that reached out um, that recently moved to Urbana, um, and the residency was a little bit of an issue at the pool. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not quite sure if they had uh, identification with them or if the identification would show their previous address and they just hadn't had it changed over yet. But um, how is that being addressed when, when people come to the window? First, if it's a you know, re issue, we would refund anybody's money so that we want satisfied customers. I think we still think there's some need to, um, you know, differentiate between resident, non-resident. I guess the alternative would be just treat it as a special event and that, you know, make it, you know, not an issue. 
um, there is a fee f to get the movies, so we knew that charging something was you know reasonable approach. We do have the resident non resident or resident non resident issue mm -hmm. in different ways. Also, the same types of situation occasionally crop up. Um, we d we didn't do a very good job of advertising that yeah. part of it in the movie when we talked about movies. I mean, obviously, if you look at our pool passes, it tells you you need to bring ID, you need right. to bring something that proves your Urbana Park District resident. Mm -hmm. um, so well, I wonder if that's something that you could put at the bottom of your advertisement, like on Facebook or absolutely. Any and other we're going outlet. to yeah. we're going to in the future. We just missed that. Right. Yeah. Um, I think if so, we did put it, there's still the propensity to, hey, I'm going to the pool, I don't want to carry stuff, I'll just take some money, you know, and show up. So I, I think we'll do everything we can do to, you know, yeah, heads absolutely. up and try to let people know. But, um, but they it were was turned, definitely they were our, turned away. I don't believe anybody was turned away. They weren't turned away. They were told it would be a non-resident right, fee. Right. Okay, right, so right, right. I think they didn't either understand or didn't anticipate. Or if you're, like you stated, if you're truly an Urbana resident, mm -hmm. but you don't have the proof, right, right. certainly we would give their money back or, you know, make them happy any, any way we could. Um, I think it continues to point to some of the challenges with resident, non-resident rates. I mean, if you... We'll save the time in this meeting, but certainly it'd be a topic for future discussion. Mm -hmm. you know, do we adhere to that in every instance, or are there times you recognize it and don't? What sort of a good policy, or is there a way to get away from it? I know in my whole time, we've discussed it six or seven times, you know, everything from do away with non-resident rates, but it always came back that Urbana residents feel that they're, you know, providing a substantial mm -hmm. you know, base mm -hmm. and that Yep. should some preference be given so we've leaned and stuck to that side of the equation um i don't know many people that leave home without id but that's just me but yeah, you know age, yeah. I, there I'm, are i don't i'm bad at that i would be one of those people that I go to the outdoor movie i'll just show up with some money and, yeah and then find out you know now i'd probably just pay it if i was that mad i'd because i know our policy is to, you know reimbursed or if you're unhappy but I'm yeah. not sure there's a perfect way to do it. But. Yeah, I would definitely say, LaShonda, that it's definitely was our error mm -hmm. on not explaining what you need to prove your resident. Well, I think I, it's I just think trial and error. I mean, it's, it, it was new. It's you The know. pool staff that were doing it, mm -hmm. they just, you know, they're used to talking about pool passes, resident, non-resident, and I don't think they, mm -hmm. they didn't put that together for the movie mm -hmm. thought process. But... Um, they're already listed for the summer. There's two more. Mm -hmm. And Leslie's going to make sure there's social media that goes out about what you need to be a resident. Yeah. So you need to prove that you're a resident of Urbana. Yeah, because, I mean, it's great. I mean, you guys did have a great turnout. And, you know, that's ahead. probably... It was probably overwhelming because you weren't expecting that many people <laughs> to show up. Couldn't but, believe it. You <laughs> know, <laughs> I mean, it... it it's one of the benefits that is good for Urbana Park District because it's getting more people involved. I mean, families are coming out and they're enjoying family events. And that's something that, you know, many residents have been talking about for a long time since, you know. I the, talked to many people that said, oh, I remember when you used to do it at Crest, because I went to at Crestview Park. They had them on that little berm. Mm -hmm. I know when we moved to the area in 86 they they offered them i had so many people tell me about when we used to offer them so mm -hmm. it was really nice to see it back in place i think it's something that does resonate with families and individuals absolutely you should have seen us fighting with the wind though with yeah. that screen it oh <laughs> i bet a little crazy right. it's an inflatable <laughs> screen yeah so oh, and wow. the ground was like rock hard so. right right wow. yeah. we had Very some chat we were a little well, to be honest with you, we started late because we could just couldn't do it. Tim and I were really trying late. to help, and <laughs> mm -hmm. Joseph showed up, and Joseph mm -hmm. helped, and mm -hmm. Leslie, who's already set it up once, but it right. wasn't near They've as windy. or trials any. already, but yeah. didn't anticipate the wind. That, oh, it's that been fierce. It's tough, but we pulled it together <laughs> maybe 15, 20 minutes late, maybe yeah. lighter, but people were in the pool. It actually made it better, though, because it was a little darker, and you right. could really see the movie. I agree. So. Yeah. So. Even the other little, the little beach party that you guys are getting ready to do is, it has people talking like these are like really unique family fun events that, you know, again, is 
getting people out and getting people to participate in some of Absolutely. our programs. So well, if this is any indicator of the, how the rest of Crystal Lake will respond to improvement. I think we're going to be in fantastic shape because we're very energized and you know it's optimistic. Uh, totally off subject, but we we had. Um, I really got to give it to Leslie and Jennifer because I think the the diversity in their staffing is just fabulous. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is just, uh, the whole pool has that feel mm -hmm. that anybody, everybody, mm -hmm. you belong. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it was really neat to see. Even at the at the movie special event, event there was yeah, very wide all mix. it was right. very diverse. Grandpas. Right. Little kids, grandmas, grandmas. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just all, 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 all sorts, all sorts of, all yeah. sorts of people. Just yeah. really quite. No cats and dogs. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can see. Well, maybe outside the fence. There were a couple outside the fence. Be one of our future movies, though. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a million dollar question: Do you uh -huh. think you guys will do something for teens? I would. I think there think was so. teens there that there night. Were, there were a lot of teens. I mean, like but we you mean do like a teen, night. just a teen event. Mm -hmm. That's a neat idea. Um, this summer? Just curious. Probably not this summer, but we have, Tim and I have had lots of different groups mm -hmm. we've been working to mm -hmm. collaborate with, um, which I could see something coming out of that. I think it would probably appeal to that group. Mm -hmm. good, good questions. Uh, we, well, just to go off of that, the one of our recent meetings was with the Urbana Free Library, and they have the Discovery Room, is that what they called it? And that's teens only and that and so we've talked about working with them and seeing what kinds of things we could do awesome so going and talking to the kids so i'll stop talking <laughs> any other questions for tim okay moving on to the president's report uh, upcoming meetings hey on the fourth of july there's no study session <laughs> <laughs> fireworks only um, <laughs> And July 11th, uh, you're going you're gonna to have the great pleasure of doing the executive session to do the semi-annual review of past executive session minutes and recordings. Yeah, that's why and I, I voted for Bob for vice president. <laughs> <laughs> we can do Perfect this. Perfect timing. Uh, and yes, the we'll uh, public hearing on the combined budget and appropriation ordinance that we're seeing a piece of here tonight and uh, adopting and approving the budget. And Presumably, there may be some bid approvals at that point. Um, I didn't have anything additional to add to that. Um, moving on to committees and liaison reports, the Finance Committee, we met last Friday, I think it was, if I've got, mm -hmm. yeah, um, and discussed some of the things that have already been mentioned here tonight. There was also some discussion about uh, Franklin Street um, and the property that we've purchased there uh, and the interest in some neighbors and in, in that but um, I think we indicated we were as a committee not interested in changing the contract that we had made that we continue to move ahead and, and make that into parkland I, I so there was unhappiness is that what you're saying yeah there was uh, people oh. people wanting to use the house yes we, Derek and I are meeting Thursday with some of the neighbors, so I think we'll have a very good dialogue and keep everyone updated. And um, had a good bit of discussion about the, the ITAP engineering thing, which I assume uh, there's no point in covering here because it, uh, Derek is and Caitlin are going to be covering that in, in detail here momentarily. Um, and there was also some discussion of uh, of the IDOT project along University Avenue and how that may be impacting Leo Park and what other possibilities there might be around that. I'm not sure, Bobby, there's anything else you remember? Yeah, that the, we one, the one thing that kind of kept coming up is the idea of the foundation receiving gifts oh, versus yeah. the park district receiving mm -hmm. gifts and mm -hmm. what's the appropriate blend of that and what's the purpose behind that and does that fit into our budget? Does it fit in for the foundation to collect money for that purpose or is that too small of a fund for them to create a new account for so I just sort of some creative thinking about how we want to approach that yeah. set up some policies or uh, 
recall of how we actually right. do it. Yeah, and then there's specifically about the, the, the green uh, bequest as to whether we would yes. actually place that with the Parks Foundation right. where they have a bit more flexible rules and how they invest things and might be able to generate a little more income from it. Um, I have been assured by uh, by Matt Deering that it's perfectly legal for us to do so. Um, that there's no problem with that so long as it's clearly stated where the money came from and where it's going and that it's, uh, reasonable records are kept at the other end mm -hmm. uh, for doing that. I think that covers pretty well what was at the Finance Committee. Is, is there any policy committee report? Um, we met just before the executive session today. Um, mostly we, were, we uh, I think the bulk of what we did was actually just review and listen to updates of uh, procedures, administrative procedures related to the audit findings that don't necessarily re need board approval, but they were, staff was mm -hmm. keeping us up to date. Um, there is one policy update related to overtime compensation that will be coming forward either in July or August, or August for us to review. Mm -hmm. It's just a tweak mm -hmm. to the current um, system, current currently what we have. So, um, and then we talked about other policies uh, that staff are working on in the pipeline. So, yeah. Uh, moving on to a Bennett Parks Foundation representative. We currently don't have that position filled, although actually both LaShonda and I were, were at the meeting on Monday. Um, and I, you know, I, things are pretty actively moving ahead uh, with their trying to recruit additional members to the Parks Foundation board. And there was an extensive discussion about the, the annual dinner and the pluses and minuses in relationship to that. I think the dinner f fell d a little bit short of breaking even uh, when you add up all the donations versus <coughs> what the expenses were. There was quite a bit of discussion about whether that the country club venue uh, lended itself well to uh, the social mixing before the actual sit down to the dinner, that too many people were just immediately sitting down and made it a little difficult for those who are trying to circulate around and make contact with the various attendees uh, a little more difficult. So some probably some planning that they're going to be working on that. And I, I had to leave the, the meeting before it was over. I don't know if there's anything additional, Lashonda, that maybe you? Um, other than the Michelle? website, so oh, yeah. they're going to be sending out a link to foundation members to take a look at before they actually launch the new website. So. That's going to be forthcoming. Um, but I do want to talk about, a little bit about the board representation mm -hmm. for the foundation, if we can spend a few minutes on that. Okay. Um, I am interested in representing our board for uh, the foundation, so I'm not sure how you have to proceed from here. It's but on the agenda later. It's on the agenda <laughs> later. Okay. okay. Never mind then. Just, we'll just railroad just in right case here. that happens. <laughs> <laughs> We have a spot. So, um, not to just to step back, was the um, do we have fewer attendance at this year's meeting than in previous years? Why was there the a, was there a, yeah at the dinner was why was there a shortfall in the? Um, was there a discussion I, about that? Uh, not, not, we didn't really go into detail. I think we can get mm -hmm. the numbers and we can look at that. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if the venue or some of the cost were higher. We have talked about increasing the cost, you know, of the, the price, you know, to get closer to uh, taking a half step back. Most of these type of things generally don't generate a profit unless you're doing all of your fundraising, you know, right at the table, like Prairie Rivers. That's right. you're there and that's when you make your, your donation. Most people do. Um, I think we can get more information on that as far as cost breakdown, income versus expenses. Um, I just didn't think it was that way last year. And so I'm curious to right. know. It seemed to be very much a very similar setup. Um, we didn't even pay for musicians this year. So I was just, it seems odd that we lost money because I thought last year, or that they lost money. The goal of increasing the price the first time was to have a, right. to, to cover the costs. We, so we should do a comparison yeah. of 
you know, look at each year income expenses and see mm -hmm. if we see a trend or a pattern or, you know, yeah, what, yeah. what is that cost? Yeah. I don't know if a I can As a percentage, right the shortfall was not huge, but right. I, it, it was Maybe noticeable. people drank more alcohol this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I also wonder, um, this year there was more of an idea of, of having a campaign, so people may have contributed less to the dinner and more to the campaign. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll ask if we can work, look at that and do some sort of evalu eval and mm -hmm. come back on the whys and the whats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to update planning. Was there anything from that committee to nope. report to see? Not now. Okay, moving on to old business. Uh, receive a draft ordinance 2017-07 to adopt the fiscal year 17-18 combined budget and appropriation ordinance. Now, there's not any actual board action <coughs> required for this, but are you going to run us through this a little bit? Maybe? I'll walk you through a little bit. So this is the official document that um, it's the draft version of the official document that the board will approve in July uh, that will assign the appropriations to the park district. That's our legal authority to spend money. So uh, this is based on the individual departmental budgets and it's in a summarized form. And then there's a contingency added in the major funds for additional spending. Uh, for example, if you received a grant or something, you wouldn't have the authority to spend it if you didn't appropriate that spending. So there's always some wiggle room that you apply uh, to your major funds to, so that you can continue to spend beyond your operating budget. Um, so the appropriations that are in this budget in the summarized format of the different categories are basically the same information that you received in the preliminary budget that was distributed in April, except that salaries have been finalized and any other last minute uh, types of changes that we've worked through with Corky and Derek have been presented. But that summary information that I provided at the April study session of the major changes are all still in place. So nothing major has changed since that meeting. And um, so if you have any questions, any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But uh, you'll receive the full budget book at the July meeting. It'll go out with your board packets that will uh, have this appropriation information in it as well. We put that together at the end of June. And that goes out in July. Any questions for Katie on that? Okay, next item on our agenda, should we choose to do so, action to appoint Urbana Parks Foundation representative. And um, so, Lashanda, you said uh, you were expressing some interest. Yes. Great. Well, I move to appoint. Commissioner <laughs> 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 Lashonda Cunningham to be the Urbana Parks Foundation representative for the 2017-18 fiscal year. And I strongly second that. <laughs> and I strongly third that. Yeah. Okay, well, we, we have the, the nomination uh, both moved and seconded. Uh, is there any further discussion on the point? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that carries unanimously. And uh, thank you very much, LaShonda, for, for being willing to take on that task. And uh, I, I hope you get real satisfaction out of it. I always have you all to lean on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard some very positive comments from a foundation board member about your presence there. So Already? Yeah. Hmm. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's glad to see you there. Okay, uh, there was no old business removed from the consent agenda, so we're on to new business. Uh, action on Ordinance 2017-06, annexing property to the Urbana Park District. And Did it's you know not a lot of property, but hey. No, it's a place how little it the was. One, one we have, as you know, it's an annual activity we do, and we do have one. And so do we have to do anything? Can yeah, can I just move to approve ordinance 2017-06 yeah. yes. to annex certain territory to the Urbana Park District? Second. 
That's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, this should uh, require a roll call vote. It's suggested. So starting with Lashande. Aye. 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 And that carries unanimously with all five commissioners voting. And next. So this I'd is <laughs> the north end of this property is the trail. Uh, is it not? It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I just thought this got sold not long ago, and I was thinking, well, there was mm -hmm. a possible opportunity for somebody. I'm very curious who bought it. Mm -hmm. I'm actually trying to look it up right now. Okay, moving on to action to approve an amendment amendment number one to an IGA with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources for the rain garden construction. Do we skip, Wait, skip see you ask, I think on B. I think Oops, B. I did, absolutely. Good grief. I'm skipping down too fast. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, we have the resolution 2017-09 to accept the fiscal year 17-18 CUSR budget. Jessica DeYoung was planning on being here, but she was unable to, and Corky said he would give us an update on the budget Yeah, draft. Just, just a couple small changes. Um, one, uh, I want to explain the report a little bit because it's not typically the way we, we see it. Um, the first column, it says budget 1718, and then it has appropriations 20 in the, in the next column. It's really the, the budget is, is the, right the right column, the appropriations column. Um, just like when recreation staff do budgets for, for us, they'll put together their formulas and their numbers and days and, and figure out all the costs, and then we round them. Uh, um, where this budget line it m must have been special rec staff numbers and then once the budget process goes through mm -hmm. there's some adjustments based on um, you know the uh, Jamil may have made a few adjustments based on the fact that the history of what's been being spent um, so that that's the difference in the numbers, but the budget's really the the right hand column um, Really the the major the, Nothing really major, but some of the lines that are growing is the part-time staffing line um, A lot of that is due to our inclusion aid process mm. um, We're we're really getting a lot of um, We're using a lot of inclusion aids mm -hmm. both here and in uh, champagne, which is a good thing because that's helping get um, Kids out. them services out to where mm -hmm. um, those individuals can participate in, in our regular programming rather than having to use CUSR programming on its own. How many do you have a sense of how many we have at camp? It camp. changes every week. Um, typically, uh, yeah, because they're at sure, different camps. Go, yeah. Typically, this time of year, we're Anywhere between eight to twelve. I, yeah. I think we yeah. said eleven. Yeah. I think at our last meeting. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But Corky's right. Yeah. It changes yeah. as soon as somebody sure. calls up. Yeah. 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 So, and um, it's only likely to go up, correct? The, it's more likely to go up than yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Once the summer starts, yeah. that group of people pretty much stay in the programs. Mm -hmm. It's more to get new ones as we move forward. Yep. Um, the only other thing that. Uh, Memberships and dues um, was a little bit higher and conference travel. Um, Jessica's got a certification she needs to go and, and renew. And I think it involves a day class as well with that, which is above and beyond what she typically does. And then one of the other staff members has a conference that they're gonna go to. Um, so really from, from the budget standpoint, I don't have a whole lot. Um, Obviously, I wasn't completely prepared for her not to show, but she is not feeling well. So um, I think the main thing I'd like to point out while we're talking special rec is um, we're working through the strategic plan that we put together. Um, Jessica and her staff actually have done quite a bit on, on the small hanging fruit mm -hmm. items. Um, <laughs> but we, one thing that we really need to look at um, for special rec, we've heard it several times in the last two months mm -hmm. um, from participants uh, or parents of participants as well. Um, this, 
this need for space for special rec. Um, we had some discussion at our yeah. special rec meeting, um, you know, typically in, you know, not that we're not thinking of them, but typically in our planning processes that we do, planning process they they use in Champaign, um, special rec's never really up there on the top. But what kind of space do they need? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we're using a facility for summer camp and after school camp mm -hmm. um, that, you know, is like a shed. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small and, thing and, site. Uh, and it, it's not very appropriate for the for the use that's happening there, but it's the space that we have. Okay. Um, we've talked about, um, you know, what more can we do with Phillips looking at the James room and see when we're looking at concepts for that. Mm -hmm. um, as we continue to look at facilities on these facility tours, we're seeing places that have special rec right. rooms, special rec yeah, times for gym. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so as Champaign Park District looks to do things, they're, I mean, they're looking at another facility over near Human Kinetics, you know, really making sure that they're thinking about it. It, it is a strategic planning goal um, to really evaluate the space needs and, and see what we can to do to help alleviate some of the um, confinement issues that, that are happening there. A sense of what their daily uh, population would be and, and you know, the people they would be dealing with on a on a daily basis, you know, <sighs> just well, roundabout. I mean, is it 20? Is it 50? Is it? Time 10? I visited the Spalding last summer. Don't went over to drop things off. Mm -hmm. Just average day. Probably a room the size of this. There are probably 50 children and Idle. adults. Yeah. Yeah. inside plus a few staff and volunteer uh -huh. summer staff th that's bumped up for summer that's bumped up for right, summer for the right. regular year um i wouldn't say it would change a whole lot through the course of the day because they have different programs that go on they do after school mm -hmm. after that um, we have uh, schools out days and sure. things like that where we have aids um, they as well in champagne have those specific days and after school programming so um, the early childhood programs that we've been doing at the early childhood education building um, when we started that two years ago I mean that's really boosted up the number of aids that we're using as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I mean I think 50 is probably a good number to, oh, okay. to think on a, on a regular mm -hmm. yeah, about so more than I was, I was yeah. assuming mm -hmm. that's I mean that's great but more than I had well, and at the same time, they're just a piece, a little space of each building that they go and use most of the time. So it, it's, uh, yeah. if, if we ever want to be more for that population, we really need to decide, right. you know, what are we gonna do from a space standpoint? Right, right. I'd highly recommend both districts consider including it in any future building expansions because mm -hmm. it's desperately needed. I think the Hayes facility is inadequate and the Spalding is definitely not yeah yeah uh, it's actually i think worse I, and i want to be careful i don't want to criticize another district's facilities we could equally look at our side and you know right, sure. determine that our spaces wouldn't be ideal but i think it's growing and i think they, it's like any population the specific needs and the age ranges mm -hmm, probably need mm -hmm. separating out so children are with more children aged and adults are with right, adults right, right. Um, right now they're grouped together for the most part in the summer well, you know, we had we had that brief time when when um, they were in Lincoln Square. Mm -hmm. Are there any commercial buildings like that 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 are? I mean, and that seemed to mean we always thought that was such a good place because it was right on the bus line. There was, you know, there, it was a, a at least for Urbana certainly a central location and easy for people to get to. Are there other should we be contemplating? Well, here's the sure, train of thought on that. Um, they have an uh, advisory committee. They've kind of followed how we put together UPDAC. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and one of the things they're hearing, because they're, they're starting the conversations with, mm -hmm. with, uh, on the facilities, and what they're hearing from everybody, and these are um, either parents yeah. or um, a, another agency that deals with, right. with, with disabilities. Um, a representative of those agencies, and they're not saying have your own building. They're saying integrate integration and and uh huh uh huh. Which I think I mean that's yeah. a good idea. Mm -hmm. So I I think the the problem with because you know 
there was a discussion at one time about the old Leonard. Right. And, and does that become, you know, the hub? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's totally going against really what we're trying to do as far as integrating everyone together. Right, right. Well, I think um, the limitation of the Lincoln Square was that was their financial or their offices. It wasn't yeah. any programming space. More of a home base. Right, right. Yeah. right. And then but they I'm, were mobile. Yeah, I, I, and I was thinking of that more as, a, as an example of some place. Mm -hmm. If there was some commercial space, if there was, if that was something that would be considered rather than having to build. I think there's a possibility of you could have a space like that that maybe took care of office space but also had some program space. Right, right, because I think But you... it didn't become the place where every special recreation program uh -huh. right. was held. Right, yeah. Um, I think there's, at, they're thinking... The Brookings building and the, the replacing the gym or right. expanding that gym or whatever, right. it's important that we keep special rec in mind with that right. but again i think it's also very important not to think about well it's just an urbanic because what champagne needs to do something as well so that right. you know it, we're getting the balance yep. between mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. people aren't just coming to a facility for special needs items yeah. right mm -hmm. right but that, it's that, it's, that it's all part and it's parcel right right yeah the regular programming right yeah. i think there's opportunity for both districts to work together to mm -hmm. you know, make mm -hmm. that happen and I think there are obviously opportunities. We're looking at all of our spaces, and Champagne's going to be expanding too. So yep, it could be yep. a good opportunity. Of course, they need it this week, but right. like everything, we'll have to wait and work through the process. Yeah, yeah. Always will. Katie, I wanted to ask your opinion about on the second page about the um, credit card fees. Um, is that? I mean, do we pay similar kinds of amounts for? How? how what, how are the fees levied? Why are there? I mean, is this like P card it's, kinds of things? Is that no, the registration? The registration processing. Ah, fees. okay. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah, we pay them to ActiveNet. So Champaign Park District has their own credit card processor. So you know, it's like three <laughs> percent. Right. But you know, okay, so, so this is what that this is what that. Where it's that uh, money actually is. fairly cheap compared yeah. to what we pay. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, so they're probably allocating, um, you know, at at the Champaign Park District level they're probably doing an allocation to program registrations related to CUSR sure. and charging it to this okay. budget. Good, that's fine. So that's I don't think it's unreasonable. Or it could okay. even be just a portion gotcha. of that mm -hmm. fee. Okay. The cost to get paid. Yep, mm -hmm. I got it. That makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Any other questions on the budget? Well, I move to approve um, Resolution 2017-09 to accept the FY 2017-2018 CUSR budget with, uh, yeah. Second. That's been uh, moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Again, we should do a roll call vote on this. Let's start at the right. Aye. 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 And that carries unanimously. Uh, moving on then now to approving an amendment to the intergovernmental agreement with the I IDNR. Planning staff has an amendment that they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so this is fairly straightforward um, that for the um, disbursement that we received from the Illinois Department of Natural Resources to fund the bioswale project, um, the agreement was to have that spent within a certain amount of time. However, state budget impasses meant that we didn't receive that money. Um, until much later than had been anticipated. And so our agreement on those funds is about to run out on June 30th um, because of the understanding that things have been more complicated than anticipated. Um, IDNR has provided an intergovernment, an amendment to our intergo intergovernmental agreement um, extending the uh, amount of time that we have to spend that money to June 30th, 2018, um, which handily covers our maintenance agreement that we currently have under contract with NCAP, which runs through the end of October. Um, so, uh, so we believe that this is going to um, solve the disbursement and budgeting issues, and uh, it just amends the, uh, the spending date. I just have one comment. You might remember last year, we kind of had a similar situation and we actually had to return the unspent funds from a small grant that we had received from IDNR because we came up against the deadline for having to need to spend the money, but we didn't have 
the process going enough because we didn't have any of the other money for this particular project. And so, I don't know actual, if Derek... That was the actual design of these rain gardens. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it was different there, uh, but what Heidi and I agreed to was, was bill us after you spend those funds and we'll reimburse you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, so this is avoiding easier. that yeah. kind of runaround in which we just get to keep the money and not have to return it and then get reimbursed for it again. It seems too sensible for state government, but <laughs> I um, move approval of the amendment one to the intergovernmental agreement with the uh, Illinois Department of Natural Research Resources for the rain garden construction, education, and monitoring project. Second. That's moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, uh, we'll do a roll call starting at the left this time. Aye. 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 Okay, and that carries unanimously. And we're moving on to uh, the more bids. I think planning and operations has definitely the next two items. Go yes. right ahead. We do. We're, we're in a little block here. Um, <laughs> so uh, in, within our fleet, we keep two 72-inch mowers currently. Um, and those mowers um, obviously mow grass in the summers and in the winters they actually have a cab unit that goes onto them that encloses it in heats uh, to go uh, do uh, snow removal on sidewalks and in parking lots. And so, um, so they're very useful machines. Uh, we're finding that our mowers tend to have about a six to seven year lifespan. You know, they get used a lot. We put them through a lot in the parks and, um, and at that, about that seven year mark they start needing a lot of maintenance. and. Uh, better to to invest in new ones at that point. So um, we did a bid for two new 72 inch mowers and John Deere uh, we, we we bid specified um, To match a John Deere product because that's what we have for all of our mowers They have interchangeable parts. So you've seen the wide area mower mower bids come through and those are John Deere and so um, Having these be John Deere is, is convenient uh, for our mechanical operations we, um, you may also remember that with our wide area mowers, we've had some issues where we've only gotten one bid the last couple of times that we've bid out um, because there's a little bit of a monopoly in the area, in Champaign County at least, on, on who sells these, these John Deere uh, pieces of equipment and, and people, uh, other companies have not wanted to overbid that um, and compete with another John Deere dealer, basically. Um, but we were very lucky. We were surprised um, this year to receive two bids, um, one from um, Aaron's Brothers in Urbana and the other from Aaron's and Sons in Gibson City. And um, my impression from um, the Gibson City, I, they're both Aaron still, but, uh, but my impression from, from the group in Gibson feud City, kind of thing, yeah, yeah it, the, my, my impression from the group in Gibson City is that they haven't really done a lot of bidding, actually, and, and Cork, Corky this morning suggested that they, um, which, isn't, which isn't a bad thing, it's, uh, Corky suggested that, you know, they've mostly been working with farmers. And, and, but they're within our, our uh, mileage range for service agreements. And so um, we were happy to ex accept a bid from them. And especially because the it bid pricing lower. came in incredibly favorably from Aaron's and Sons. And I spent a lot of time, you know, fact checking and, and truthing their bid and, and feel very comfortable with, with the product that they're going to be giving us, which is uh, these 72 inch John Deere mowers with heavy duty 60 inch brooms to do snow sweeping and uh, cab attachment. We did save some money. Um, we, we'd gotten a quote originally um, that for the cab that would come installed already. And our mechanical crew and our mowing crew is confident that they can do the installations and it actually saved about $8,000 um, to bid it without the installation. So, um, so that's some of the brilliance of our in-house staff and, and their capabilities. Um, but you know we're, we're very pleased between this and some um, incredibly favorable bids on um, previous vehicles and equipment that we bid for the 2017 budget. We have come in about thirty thousand dollars under budget on the entire vehicles and equipment line. So um, we were that it's pretty astonishing. Um, That's one more. Huh? That's one more. That's one more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, or another truck, yeah. but. But we're going to be prudent and uh, save that into c either vehicles contingency for next year or general contingency for, for the capital budget overall. So, so we have two mowers up for your consideration. 
And the intention is to take their trade-in offer yes. this time? Uh, we, oh, so, so that's a good yeah, point. We did, um, we did research the trade-ins um, the same way that we've been doing, kind of the, that we've had you know, some really good success on those auctions recently. Um, and when Denny came back to me with what he's found for 72-inch mowers of this sort, they were exactly right in line. So it was like $7,000 on auction time, and the offer here was 6500 and that's not worth staff time to, to stress about the difference. So, so we're happy to accept the trade in on these. Well, I move to award the low bid of $53,925 for two 72 inch commercial front <coughs> mowers with options uh, to Aaron's and son of Gibson City, Illinois. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Do a roll call starting at the right this Aye. time. Aye. 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 And that carries unanimously. We're now on to uh, approval of an engineering contract, or are we not? We are. We are. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. well, well, we're presenting an engineering presenting contract it. tonight. We are, we are actually presenting it. Um, so, okay, so bear with me. There's, there's a bit of a story here. <laughs> So, um, so we've received this ITEP grant. We were uh, success <laughs> successful applicants with the help of the Regional Planning Commission. And uh, we have come to understand very quickly that uh, ITEP and working with state and federal programs together, and especially in the state of Illinois, which recently implemented a new grant oversight program, the GATA, that you have to go through, which you guys actually have passed several resolutions <laughs> regarding, um, we there are a lot of bureaucratic challenges to having a grant like this. And we haven't had one in a while. So um, one of those challenges was figuring out exactly what we needed to do for engineering services. And um, last month, we actually had an updated release of engineering funds from IDOT um, because there had been some uh, miscommunications about what exactly the scope of our project was, specifically that we want to do the phase one engineering for the Broadway Avenue stretch as well, so that we know how the paths intersect. Um, from that, we had the option of just selecting our own engineering firm. If we had done that and gotten an approval completed by June 30th, of, or June 22nd of this year, um, which actually we're, we're, we're uh, luckily within that boundary, However, we made the decision uh, internally that we did not know a lot about ITEP grants. We know that they are challenging and that we wanted to make sure that we were selecting the best firm for our interests and, and to, to administer this, this uh, grant money with us. So um, we initiated a request for qualifications process. We had responses from five firms and interviewed four of them. Um, and through that uh, qualifications-based selection process, we, um, we selected Fair Graham um, Engineering and Environmental Services uh, located in Champaign, Illinois. They have a lot of experience with ITEP grants and um, also just a, a wealth of knowledge about the area. You know, when we uh, interviewed them and we were talking about, um, you know, what aesthetic do we really want for this new Park Street path? Is this just going to be clay and concrete uh, or, you know, what's it, what's it going to look like? You know, we were able to say, well, we want it to look a lot like the Broadway stretch that we installed. And they all went, oh, yeah, yeah, we know exactly what that looks like. And, and that's a really valuable level of knowledge um, to bring to a project like this. Um, so uh, they, uh, as you can see, we just passed around their uh, scope of services and their, uh, their, their fee proposal. Um, that just came in a couple of hours ago because we did not we did not give them much time. <laughs> we uh, we only gave them about a week to to work through this with us, and and they were uh, very gracious in in helping and and getting things to us, literally exactly on time. So um, so we're happy about that. What this is approving tonight is um, the exact scope of services that we were released by IDOT to pursue, and so that is ninety thousand dollars worth of. Uh, um, phase one engineering and phase two engineering for this path project. And phase one does a lot of the environmental surveys. It does, um, you know, soil sampling if you need to. It looks at the Endangered Species Act. Um, it looks at cultural, cultural, uh, cultural resources. Um, it conducts public open houses and uh, feedback forums if you need them. Um, and then creates this project development report that is submitted to IDOT and 
um, the federal government for review and approval. And then phase two, once phase one has been approved, phase two moves into what is the actual construction of this path going to look like. Um, so, or the, the details, the bid specifications for the path. So, um, so that's what uh, Fairgram has given us exactly is ni a $90,000 proposal for those two aspects of the project. Oh, and, and um, I should mention the phase one also covers the Broadway Avenue stretch, um, as I okay. indicated before. So um, one of the concerns though, is that um, the state did not release us to release the money for us to complete the surveying that's required for phase one engineering. Um, and that's a little bit of an oversight and a miscommunication on the budgets. There were two different budgets that were submitted through our grant, and so we think that they made this agreement based off of one of them that didn't call out the surveying specifically. Another budget did call out the surveying specifically, so we know that it's budgeted within the full $537,000 $537, grant amount. It's in there, it just wasn't called out. Um, so we need to go back and talk to them about getting that approved probably separately, but um, Fairgram has let us know that that will be an additional $17,000 on top of this $90,000. Um, and what we would like to ask the board to do tonight is approve the $90,000 contract um, with a 10% contingency of an additional $9,000 and pending IDOT approval, the, uh, the survey sum of $17,000. And I can repeat that again for anybody who needs to hear it twice. <laughs> one, one little clarification. We should oh, also yes. probably also say approving the $90,000 pending IDOT approval because they want to oh, review yes. that right, as well. Right. They do. So 90 plus 17 plus nine. Nine. Okay. Well, that 10%, right? Yeah. Gotcha. But 10% of 90. 10% right. of 90. Of yeah. And not 10% of the 17,000 as well. I think it would be. A good idea to include temperature. Yeah, there probably. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Derek, talk to me about contingencies. I definitely would recommend because yeah, you something know, like this. we're working with IDOT and and, yeah. and a site that we don't know as well either. Right. We don't mm -hmm. have a lot of history of working projects there. And to be clear, both sums should be pending IDOT approval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then really it's a 107. I would keep them separate though. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. We're authorized at this point for 90. Sorry, we know this one's a little complicated. Right. I think uh, just I should mention too, you know, the alternative was to wait, put it back a month. We really want to get moving on this project. Mm -hmm. So typically we wouldn't bring things to you all like this, but we thought it's pretty critical to get it moving. Right. So so the, the advantage of the Broadway being in this um, is that time-wise, but we're not getting any funds for the Broadway piece. The construction. So right. that's right. not. Right necessarily tied right. to this grant that we could go ahead and do that, but we still have to do engineering. We are getting funds for the phase one engineering of it. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So it act, you know, right. we but think not for the construction, right? Right. But we're thinking strategically if they funded the engineering, a, you know, another application hopefully would mm -hmm. support the yeah. construction right. because you're half way there. Right. So we, we also knew that the, the construction of the Broadway path would, um, the Broadway portion of the path would weaken our application. It has a lot of variances. Um, so, so this, this uh -huh, um, uh -huh. when you're creating a multi-use path, you need things to be fairly strictly aligned. You know, things need to be 10 feet off of the road that you need to have t seven feet of clearance on the other side of it and it needs to be a 10 foot path. That's 27 feet that you are required to work within when you're laying down one of these paths. Well, we there is not 27 that. feet of space on Broadway right now. And so, like I said, we would have had to um, go through a lot of, mm -hmm. um, you know, changes uh, or, or variances. But with getting the phase one completed right now, we can know how we're going to overcome them um, and submit future applications yeah, for that yeah, project. That's a good idea. So you want two motions then, one oh. for 90 plus a contingency of 9,000? And then one for 17,000 plus 1,700. 1, Both pending IDOT approval. Pending IDOT approval. Yes. And I think one other thing I'd add to this is that uh, this is one block from that dangerous University Broadway intersection. Mm -hmm. So it could be very important to keep the traffic going safely. Yep, yep. Once they Absolutely. fix that intersection. All right, I'll do the first one. <laughs> I move that we award the Lake Crystal <laughs> Sorry, the mouth Crystal cool. Lake Park shared use path. Somebody wants to use 
Path Construction Engineering to Fair Graham of Champaign, Illinois in the amount of $90,000 with a contingency of $9,000. Pending IDOT approval. Pending IDOT approval. Thank you. Second. All right. That's moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Let's do a roll call then, starting with the left. Aye. 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 And that carries unanimously. And so is there a motion to approve the uh, surveying charges? Um, <laughs> I move to uh, uh, approve the surveying charges uh, to the Fairgram uh, of Champaign, Illinois, in the amount of $17,000 with a contingency of $1,700. Pending IDOT. Pending <laughs> IDOT approval. Thank you. Thank you. So it's easier to do from the other it side. <laughs> the room Even pressure. though I wrote it down. <laughs> I'll second it. I, I did hear a second. I think this isn't very hard. We could Bob, just do Bob, it. Bob, 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 Bob seconded. I think Bob seconded. Bob seconded. Oh, okay. okay. I thought, yeah, okay. We're nerdling around over so here. So it's been, been moved by Meredith, seconded by Bob. Is there any further discussion right. on this one? And let's do a roll call starting with Bob. Aye. 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 Okay, that carries yeah. unanimously as well. You know, people watching this must wonder okay. about us. <laughs> and that sometimes it brings us brings us to custodial services. So yeah, this is really interesting. Yeah. For some time, uh, we've been looking at custodial services. One, one of the things that we've been interested in is the concept of a umbrella group, a group of uh, custodial staff that could uh, work across the agency in different fac facilities and. We assembled a, a, a large group of staff to look at it. Uh, as we looked at it in more detail, we felt like aquatics custodial should still be its own separate entity. It's really very specialized work. And mm -hmm. they also do some things like water testing and filter basket changes that yes. are important to, to, to just keep in a, in, a, in a position that's dedicated and trained and does that regularly. Um, yeah. And so uh, our plan uh, was to look at two full-time staff uh, that would work overnight hours uh, at Phillips Recreation Center, uh, Nita First Nature Center, and for the first time, uh, the Brookings uh, Gymnasium, which has been without true custodial services for as long as we've been there. Mm. Um, uh, Brookings management staff have been you know, doing cleaning toilets and you know, pushing the room and things like that. Uh, and, and we budgeted for that. Uh, that. About that time, we were doing our facility tours. And in each facility tour, uh, we would ask them, yep. uh, you know, how, how do you all structure your janitorial services? And we heard that almost that, that most of them uh, had, had overnight uh, yep. contractual services. And then during the day, they would have people come through, either part-time staff or full-time staff, that would just sort of touch the facility and make sure it stays clean, stock toilet paper, uh, you know, clean up spills and things like that. And uh, we began to, to think, well, maybe we should rethink this. About that same time as well, we began having some concerns about some of our overnight staff uh, that were performing custodial work about um, you know, were we supervised them adequately? Were we, were we able to make sure they're reporting to duty when they're supposed to be? Uh, it's been a position that over the, the last 10, 15 years, we, we've had some challenges mm -hmm. with. And so we, we thought this is an opportunity to, to, to think differently about this. And we brought in um, Upkeep, uh, who was doing work for the city of Urbana, uh, to talk with them a little bit more. Uh, I also talked to two other custodial service companies in town, ESS and Service Master. Uh, ESS does the school district, Service Master does Champaign Park District, and uh, got a better sense of, of how they operate. Uh, and I think you know we, we became convinced that this is this is the direction we should we should head in. Uh, we've had some less positive experiences with the custodial in the past when we've tried to have them quickly fill in somewhere uh, where somebody got injured. Uh, we had a void. Uh, we asked them to, to clean during facility occupied hours. We asked yeah, them to be nice. building attendance. That, that's not their strength. But when given the opportunity to come in after hours with a, with a, a group of people that they've trained for that facility, uh, their customers are very happy. And that was evidenced by the, the reference checks we performed. So we moved forward with bidding it. Uh, and the bid results are before you here. Um, they are honestly just a, a tad higher than we had, had anticipated. Uh, part of that's because we have such limited hours that, that, that we can facilitate Oh, cleaning. sure, of course, yeah. So yep. with that comes a higher cost. What we were told is that the, the, the kind of mi minimum wage for custodial cleaning our area is about $13 an hour, which is, of course, more than minimum wage. But that's what they find they have to pay just to have people come to work on a regular basis mm -hmm, that we can mm -hmm, depend mm -hmm. upon uh, that will we'll stay with them long term. Um, and so um, these numbers, are, I think, are a little bit higher than that. 
Um, but, but that's not different than what we pay. And right. when you factor on our benefits, which are considerable, we think this is the way to go. And, mm -hmm. and we also avoid some of the, the concerns we've had in the past. So, And if we don't like it, we don't have to keep doing it. Exactly. It's, it's, yep. a, it's a good opportunity for us to try something. Right. If it doesn't work, we can certainly move back sure. to what we've been yeah, doing in yeah. the past. Um, so it's our recommendation uh, that you all approve the base bid uh, to ESS in the amount of 61800 And as a modification, I, I think I would suggest that we also add a 10% contingency. Um, I know that there's been some talk about maybe extending some hours, you know, weekends at some of our facilities. That would require some additional cleaning, and that would that, that would allow us to, to pick that up if we needed to. And so our recommendation would be uh, ESS for 61800 plus an additional contingency of uh, $6,180. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 6180 I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I drive by them every time I come in. It's nice to have an Urbana firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be glad glad for that I will mention that this would this would allow you know we would have a residual of what we budgeted of uh, 37,254 um, we think that along with some additional money that recreation has budgeted uh, that would be enough to hire someone full-time for the balance the rest of the season uh, next year we'd be reevaluating all this uh, we think that we may be rescoping some of our custodial services to get a little bit more tight mm -hmm. and we'll certainly have an opportunity to, to further evaluate the, the full-time staff position which we think will be working during the afternoon hours uh, with some overlap with Della. Uh, Della would act as sort of a coordinator for custodial work and also help to make sure that the work that ESS performs is to standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if everything goes great like we think it will, then we do have the option for two more years at the same price. Oh, wow. Well, after the first year, so. I move we award the base bid of $61,800 for daily and weekly custodial cleaning to ESS Clean of Urbana <clears throat> with the addition of a $6,180 contingency fee. Second. That's been, <clears throat> been moved and seconded. Any further discussion or questions? Michael, I just wanted to compliment the whole group. Oh. It's been one of the toughest processes we've gone through because it's really difficult to uh, figure it out that it works for everybody at every time slot, every building. So we bought brought equality as best as we could to try to up the buildings that need it while keeping the better buildings at the same, at least quality we can provide. Team work together hard, obviously gives a chance to try this. I'm sure we'll get some feedback and there'll be some, you know, uh, changes or revisions or refinement, but just want to say they did a great job and really pleased we'll see how it works out for us obviously that's the real proof but there's yep. no lack of effort to get us to the next couple of squares yeah it was obviously really well thought through any other questions or comments okay we have the motion on the table uh starting roll call starting at the left aye 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 and that carries unanimously so and uh Brings us down to comments from commissioners. Any, any comments? Uh, hearing none, and I think we've exhausted our agenda. I'll declare us adjourned.